بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله سبحانه وتعالى has granted us the Quran the power cannot be estimated its potency cannot be fathomed Allah has placed a lot of potential energy and force in the kalam of Allah it is the word of Allah like how the Japanese underestimated they misjudged the underrated atomic power when it was witnessed then its value became obvious it should not be as well that this kalam of Allah this book of Allah its value is only understood when we go in the Qabr. Now while Allah has given us life, Allah has given us health, Allah has given us wealth, we need to utilize uh, these energy, this favor of Allah, the, the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His obedience and among that is the Qur'an. Hazrat Hassan bin Ali radiallahu anh used to say, إِنَّ مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَكُمْ رَوْا الْقُرْآنِ رَسَائِلْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ The people of the past used to see the Qur'an as a love letter, as a treatise, a message, a love letter from Allah Rabbu Alameen. So it's not an ordinary book, it is not just a scripture, it is not just pieces, pages of a book, but it is a special book فَكَانُوا يَتَدَبَّرُونَهَا بِاللَّيْلِ so Since they seen the value in this Qur'an and its potency, then in the darkness of the night, they should make tilawat of Qur'an and ponder on the Qur'an. In tahajjud salat, ponder on the ayat of the Qur'an. وَيَتَفَقَّدُونَهَا فِي النَّهَارِ And in the day, they used to study and seek the treasures which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in His Kalam. So this is a great book, it is a noble book. Kaab Ahbar used to say, As-Sabiqoon As-Sabiqoon Was-Sabiqoon As-Sabiqoon Ula'ika Al-Muqarrabun With regard to this ayah, and those foremost in Iman, in faith, will be the foremost in the year after. Who will be those people who will supersede everybody and will be to nearest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, closest to Allah and will be eligible for gardens of delight. Fi jannatin na'im. He said it will be those people whom ahlul Qur'an it will be the people of the Qur'an. So we need to become people of the Qur'an. Katara used to say, اِعْمَرُوا بِهِ قُلُوبَكُمْ وَعْمَرُوا بِهِ بُيُوتَكُمْ That populate and fill your hearts with the Kalam of Allah. Inhabit, saturate, flood your hearts with the Kalam of Allah and fill and saturate your houses with the Kalam of Allah. Your hearts and houses need to be flooded, overwhelmed, dripping with the Tilawat of Qur'an. That's how much we need to be engaged in this Qur'an. Ibn Masood radiallahu say, Inna hadha al-qulub These hearts are containers. فَاشْتَغِلُوهَا بِالْقُرْآنِ وَلَا تَشْتَغِلُوهَا بِغَيْرِهِ So engage with the Qur'an, submerge your heart, immerse your heart in the Qur'an, become absorbed in the Qur'an and don't engage yourself in anything else besides the Qur'an. So amongst Shaqi and Sa'id, Ulema explained that there will be two groups of people, the fortunate and the wretched. The fortunate are the ones who found Allah 
the ones who will go to Jannatul Firdaus, the ones who will be saved from the fire of Jahannam, and the unfortunate will be those who will be wretched and deprived, ill-fated in dunya and akhirah. So scholars have gathered six points. Waradafil Quran al Karim that a person cannot be ill-fated. So we need to try to gather these six qualities for those who will be amongst the fortunate. Number one, obedience to parents. That those people who are obedient to their parents, we are hopeful they will not be from the wretched. Number two, dua. Walam akum bi duaika rabbi shakiya. Those people who are engaged in dua and turn into Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not be deprived. Number three, those that seek guidance and are desirous for hidayat. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ فَمَنِ اتَّبَعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا يَذِلُّ وَلَا يَشْقَى That those people who follow the guidance and seek the guidance, then they will not be deprived. Number four, the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. سَيَذَّكَّرُ مَنْ يَخْشَى that those people who fear Allah وَيَتَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَشْقَى They will not be derived. Number five, those people who have taqwa, the fear of Allah, abstain from sin and incline to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala لَا يَسْلَاهَا إِلَّا الْأَشْقَ الَّذِي كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّى وَسَيَجَنَّبُهَا الْأَتْقَ الَّذِي يُؤْتِي مَا لَهُ يَتَزَكَّى That those who are muttaqeen, they will not be from among the shaqi. And the last category, number six, are the people of the Qur'an. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ لِتَشْقَى That the person who is engaged in the Qur'an will not be from amongst the unfortunate. So these are, this is a great favor of Allah to this Ummah to recite Tilawat of Qur'an, to practice on the Qur'an. So we know we must read Qur'an, we know we need to practice on the Qur'an, but do we have Yaqeen on the Qur'an? Do we follow the Qur'an? That's a big question. Knowing is different from believing. So a person knows something, or a person has yaqeen in something, a person has iman in something. So if a person has the correct yaqeen, one is belief. Qalatil arabu amanna. We have brought iman. Qullam tu'minu. You haven't brought iman, you have just accepted Islam. So one is just to know and one is to believe with the heart. There's a big difference. For example, somebody says, um, do you know anybody who is a good marksman? So this person says, my father is a brilliant marksman. He is the best. What's your proof that he's the best? You can put a person uh, with an apple on his head and he will shoot the arrow. So you know your father is the best marksman, but do you believe it? Are you ready to be that person with the apple on your head and he will shoot the bow and air, shoot the arrow towards you? So now it will come with belief. You know he's the best marksman, but if you are ready to be the volunteer to put the apple on your head and he shoot the arrow in your direction, then you believe that he's the best marksman. So that's the difference. We know we need to make tilawat of Qur'an, we know, but do we believe? So there was an interesting court case where in a small town where there was no alcohol, so somebody decided to put a tavern. So the local church, they said in the evening we'll pray and 
we hope something will come out of it. So they went and they uh, prayed and as they prayed the cavern was struck by lightning and burnt to the ground. So the owner of the cavern sued the church and he claimed that the prayers of the congregation were responsible. So the church hired a lawyer to argue in court that they were not responsible. So the presiding judge, after reviewing the case initially, before everything started, he said, no matter how this case turns out, one thing is clear, the tavern owner believes in prayer and the Christians, the people of the church, do not. Why? Because he's saying prayer burnt and they saying the prayer didn't burn. So one is even after seeing and witnessing and knowing, like in Medina al Munawwara, they were munafiqeen, they seen the Nabi of Allah, they seen the miracles, yet they did not bring Iman. Should not be as well that we have seen the Quran a park, we have witnessed the miracle of the Quran, yet a person does not abide by the Kalam of Allah or does not find time to make Tilawat of Qur'an. Qur'an is Hudal Lin Nas. It is a means of Hidayat for people. So this book is a means of guidance. It's a remedy for guidance. It's a recipe for guidance. Unfortunate is a person who is deprived of this Qur'an. A part of the miracle of the Qur'an is so many ayat in a short period. Some ulama have said 22 years, 5 months and 14 days. Others say it began from the 9th of Rabi'ul Awal 16 and in the period of 22 years, 2 months and 22 days. So nevertheless, approximately 23 years of revelation, so much treasures in a short period. And what does the Kalam of Allah contain. So, Alama ibn al Arabi in uh, Itqan has mentioned that Tawheed Tadkir, Tawheed the oneness of Allah, Tadkir remind, reminding one about Akhirat, about Allah and the laws. The Quran contains these three aspects. So, that's the miracle of the Quran, it's, it's all comprehensive. More than that, Surah Fatiha is so short, seven verses, but it contains these three subjects. So that's the miracle in Surah Al-Fatiha. And the chosen ones for revelation were Anbiya Ali Musalat Wasalam. Approximately 25 Anbiya mentioned over 527 times in the Quran. So very comprehensive. Just taking one eye of the Quran. The most comprehensive ayah of the Qur'an is in Surah An-Naml Hatta idha ataw ala wadin naml qalat namlatun So in the end addressed the rest of the ends. So this ayah is very comprehensive because it shows warning, it shows command, it has a call, it has advice, it has a speciality, it has generality, it has indications, it has an excuse. So, ulama have listed many forms of eloquence in this one ayah. Some, some ayah, TFTN 15, 20, over 30 forms of eloquence in just one ayah of the Quran. Alama Jalaluddin Suyuti in Khan has mentioned that some scholars of the opinion that every verse of the Quran has 60,000 meanings. Every verse of the Quran has 60,000 meanings. Let's take some tafsirs. Among the famous tafsir is Tafsir ibn Kathir. So, Alama Imam Uddin, we generally quote Alama ibn Kathir, Rahimullah, 747 AH, four volumes. And it's among the most accepted tafsirs written 
And uh, this tafsir, according to Alama Shah Anwar Kashmiri, Rahmatullah Alayhi, 200,000 tafsirs were written until the 12th Hijri century. And uh, about two of them, of them, 200 of them are such that they cover 400 volumes. But amongst the tafsir that has been compiled, tafsir Ibn Kathir is amongst the most accepted tafsir. Alama Hafiz Shain has written a tafsir, 1000 volumes and that covered 18 ajsa of the Qur'an. 1000 volume covering 18 ajsa of the Qur'an. So if we if he had to complete the entire Quran tafsir, then you're looking at approximately 1,666 volumes. If he had to complete the entire Quran, another maqbool tafsir is tafsir tafsir ruhul maani. And uh, the scholar Alama Alusi Al Hanafi 1270 Hijri, written a scholar of Baghdad, which comprises of 30 volumes. And this tafsir is regarded as a summary of all previous tafsir. Azad Molana Zarwali Khan used to say that the author has written this tafsir after studying 42,000 tafsir after studying 42,000 tafsir he prepared this tafsir amongst the great taf tafsir is Hadaik Dhat Basha where the author is written it is amongst the voluminous tafsir 500 volumes, some mention is 700 volumes. Was born in 393 Hijri, passed away at 488 at the age of 95 years. And Ibn Najjar says that this tafsir, I came across this tafsir and just one ayah of the Quran. And this ayah, yeah. He wrote tafsir that alone was one volume. And for Surah Al Fatiha, it covers some say five, some say 25 volumes for just Surah Al Fatiha. So, this is a Mubarak, blessed kitab. It is the Kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's an indicator of how much what a person loves. If a person loves a author, they will read their books. If you love Allah, you will read the kalam e pak Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah you say, إِذَا أَرَدْتَ أَن تَعْلَمَ مَا عِنْدَكَ وَعِنْدَ غَيْرِكَ مِنْ مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ If you want to know what love you have or what anybody else has, then فَانْذُرْ مَحَبَّةَ الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ قَلْبِكَ Then look at how much Qur'an you have in your life. How much? of the love of Qur'an is in your heart. So the, the, the love for the Qur'an, the azmat of the Qur'an, in the olden days they used to write the scriptures, the book had to be handwritten. So there wasn't many nuskhas of the Qur'an. There was one couple who made a niyat that they want to get the Qur'an a park. So they collected money and their entire life objective was just to have the book of Allah. So when we love Allah, we will sacrifice everything. So anyway, they collected enough money and the day came where they saved enough to buy the Qur'an. So the husband decided they were thrilled, they were happy, overjoyed and they took this money and they went to the person who was a scribe and they purchased the Qur'an. So when he came back home, they realized that they had no place to put the Qur'an because they couldn't put it anywhere where it was disrespectful. So the wife said, I will carry it. And the husband said, okay, let's take chances. The evening came and they rotated. 
you will sleep when you are tired you wake me up and then I will hold the Quran and they passed the entire night like this it is said that when morning daybreak happened Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them hufad of the entire kalam of Allah they were naturally hafiz of the Quran although they could not read any but of the Quran but the fact that they showed the azmat of the karam of Allah and some mention is that when they were holding the Quran and when they tried to read Quran they said Hada kalamu rabbi they put their fingers on that verse and they said this is the kalam of Allah this is the kalam of Allah Allah made them hufad of his kalam may Allah give us tawfiq of making amal the amal for today is that when a person's child passes away to be patient this rewrite specifically مَا مِن مُسْلِمٍ يَمُوتُ لَوْ ثَلَاثَةٌ لَمْ يَبْلُغُ الْحِنْثِ You have three children they pass away they even attain puberty إِلَّا أَدْخَلَ اللَّهُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will enter that person into Jannah through the barka of him being patient مَنْ اِحْتَسَبَ ثَلَاثَةً مِنْ سُلْبِهِ دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ This is a sign that this person is a jannati wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen